Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Update Show. My name is Omari Salisbury, flying solo today. It got some real important information here. And, and actually, we, we've had to switch up the, the the program for today. It was actually because Treyana is out here today. We'll go and put up that slide, Salman. Should be the very last one that's there. So uh, Treyana's niece, Navia Hampton, is uh, missing right now age 12 years old last seen in federal way if you have any information on nevea hampton age 12 uh requesting you to contact the federal way police department and so uh clearly trey's uh out today um looking for her niece fortunately though yesterday we did our um our green book interviews down there at the in Tacoma at the Washington State Historical Museum. And so what we'll do here today in today's show um, is we have an interview with Trey and Washington State uh, Senator Tawina Nobles. And it was a really great interview. So we'll play that here shortly. But I do have a few formalities to go over before we jump into that. And we'll get it going like we usually do. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Update Show. I want to remind you that right now, right now is the perfect opportunity for you to tag and share the stream. Tag and share the stream with people you feel would appreciate culturally relevant news and information emanating from right here in the Emerald City. Especially you want to share, share the stream today as well. If you got your people down there in Tacoma and Paris County and everything else, city of destiny, stand up. You know what I'm saying? We got your people on here. I want to remind, I, oh, I, what's next? We got a shout out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot going on in the studio today, everybody. Want to give a big shout out to our partners over at KBCS 91.3 over at Bellevue College and, of course, the South Seattle Emerald. You can listen to the Morning Update show anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast. I'm talking about Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google. All you have to do is search Converge Media Network. Also reminding everybody, especially those out there that might be vaccine hesitant, you know, we got a lot of space and grace for you. We got an online resource here, hereforuswa.org, hereforuswa.org, culturally curated information for those in our community who might be vaccine hesitant. Also, if you've already gotten a vaccine, it's only the booster, man, I get it. It's like one booster, two booster, four booster. I ain't even going to talk about this monkeypox thing, but. You can get, if you need information on vaccine, on testing, on boosters, and everything else, want to go over to hereforuswa.org. All right. All of that being said, what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into this interview. Like I said, Treyana sat down for almost 40 minutes yesterday in the Washington State Historical, uh, Washington State History Museum. It's the dope one. You know, by the way, Tacoma, big shout out that museum, Salman, that museum district. Yeah, it's like three, four museums all right next to each other. Downtown Tacoma is cracking. Y'all might find me down there. But um, Treyana and 
State Senator Tawana Nobles sat down. Great conversation ranging from the Green Book exhibit, which is going on there right now, um, and also Black culture and Black life in Tacoma. Hey, everybody. It's Trey Holiday, And right now, I have the pleasure of sitting down with State Senator Tawana Nobles. Hi, Tawana. Hi. How are you, Trey? <laughs> hey, I'm well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. It's really an honor to be here. Well, I, I got to say, you know, one of the things that, that sticks out to me is thank you for being a representative of us here uh, in Washington State. It's so important. And we are seeing that the diversification of our governmental systems are so important. Tell us a bit about what it means for you to be a state senator. Yeah, when you said you were gonna tell me what sticks out to you, I thought you were gonna say my braces. So I'm glad you made a, <laughs> a pivot away from that. Um, but it, I, I think I, I absolutely agree with you. Representation is so important. It is a pleasure and honor to be able to serve um, this amazing state and to serve the district where I live and where I get to raise my family. And um, I think more of us need to be represented. What I love about my story and my background is I get to bring to the legislature my stories of um, experiencing homelessness and experiencing the foster care system and um, dealing with family members who had substance use disorders, but also I bring um, my background in U.S. politics. That's what I studied in school and my love for government and my love for community and just serving others. So I get to bring the dynamic person that I am to the state legislature and work with incredible colleagues. And we pass legislation that really impacts the state, but I think it is more meaningful and more impactful when we have a diversity of backgrounds and stories and experiences dictating what type of um, law should be passed and of course we do it in partnership with community we pass legislation that is going to move Washingtonians forward and that to me is such an honor such a privilege well I, you know I really appreciate what you're saying here because so much of that work is about collaborative effort and that's what I'm hearing you say I mean when we talk about people bringing their lived experience to the table thank you for doing that because otherwise they wouldn't have that voice of let me tell you exactly what it is because oftentimes there's a lot of nuance in that right when we're talking about drafting new legislation and policy there's a lot of nuance that'll get lost if your voice is not there at that table and at those several tables so I really love that you're representing so many different areas that are much needed in this state I mean we talk about homelessness we talk about a lot of things that people are going through here because of the inaffordability of yeah. a lot of our areas um, you know tell us a bit about what it means to you to then be representing that in a way that drafts something that could really be long lasting for the state. I've been seeing some pivotal changes since you've been in office. Yeah, I think the piece that is so incredibly important to me is this opportunity to not just um, have an influence on legislation, but to be someone that can stand up and say that there is not a look for being unhoused. It's not a look. Mm -hmm. So many people think if you were unhoused, if you're doubled up, if you are homeless, if you are a child and qualify as McKinney Vento, there is a specific look that goes along with it. And I tell people all the time when my siblings and I and, and our mother were, you know, wandering the streets or stealing groceries, is doing crazy things to survive and things that I hope no person has to endure we still look good, we still um, were healthy, there wasn't a look associated with it, but it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a crazy struggle for us. And so I think to represent also life after, because we use language like experience homelessness and experience foster care, because it is not always a permanent thing for mm -hmm. many of us. Mm -hmm. It is something that we experience, and now today I get to pass legislation that can positively impact those who have experienced homelessness or the foster care system or the number of things that I experienced as a young person. But I think there is just life after and I hope that I can inspire many more people not only to run for office if that's what they choose to do, but especially when we talk about youth experiencing foster care and the statistic of fewer than 3% will obtain a college degree, I hope that I inspire multiple youth who have experienced the system to pursue um, college 
college and careers because I was able to not only get an associate's but a bachelor's and a master's. And again, to stand here as a representative for our community and a state senator, it just blows my mind the type of gains that we can make when our community invests in us. So I know that policy as a legislator is making a difference, but I also know that it's the real community, the people on the ground, people who spoke life into me, people who did not give up on me, mm -hmm. people who told me to keep going. And I believed in myself as well, but it's it's the people who you know will receive the funding, who are implementing the legislation to really make a difference that are gonna change the lives of young people and adults in our communities who will help them to find homes, who will help them to get rental assistance or mortgage assistance, and who will help young people to open bank accounts and help them to access whatever they need around education or if they need social emotional support. So yes, we passed the legislation, but I credit the individuals who are doing the work every single day in nonprofits, in business, or other community organizations, those are the folks who are the real game changers. And like you said, we work in collaboration to really get this done. You know, I appreciate that because as somebody who wears multiple hats, I understand what it means to be able to make a have a balance with it all right i mean i'm i'm out here in the community as a, you know an advocate and an activist right but also uh for me so much of it is about being able to share the story so i love that converge media does that we're very specific about that and very intentional um which i appreciate so much and also as a media director for king county equity now same thing right where i'm like we need to be telling the stories of these amazing community organizations that often oftentimes are crafting the solutions that then need to just be scaled up, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. need to have that kind of state spotlight, uh, local governmental spotlight on them so that they can shine and thrive and get the resources that they need to be, yes. you know, sustainable. So I, I, I really appreciate you saying that because I see it every day. And I think, you know, Tacoma really represents so much rich history, right? When you're talking about people standing up for their rights, people pushing the system to really include them. Tell us a bit about some of that history that you know exists right here uh, in Tacoma that you then get to take on because you're carrying on that same legacy. Yeah, you know, it is that legacy that really gets me up every single day to do this work. When I started as a CEO of the Tacoma Urban League almost five years ago, the one thing that I wanted to carry forward is, um, stamina. So when I think of legacy and when I think of all of the work that has happened before me, Tacoma did not change. Um, Tacoma did not progress because people gave up. It's because the leaders who founded our Tacoma Urban League over 50 years ago, the leaders that changed the trajectory of education at our local institutions like Tacoma Community College, who stood up um, and spoke out against racism, who stood up for social justice, they had stamina. They showed up every single day, and I think sometimes it's so easy to say, I did a protest, you know, I, I showed up and I did something. I um, wrote a letter to someone, I went to a city council meeting, and I think it, in order for us to see real changes, we have to stick in it. What I also love about our generation now is we do talk a lot about self-care. So yes, we want to have the stamina and yes, we want to stick with it, but there are some days where we may need to tap out and let someone else tap in so we can rest and then get, get back in the fight. But I want to be an incredible leader that will keep going every single day. And I think the fight looks different. I think here in Tacoma, when I think about, you know, Victoria, Mayor Victoria Woodard and Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland, when I think about the Lao Quasiems or former Mayor Harold Moss or a former CEO of the Urban League, Mr. Thomas Dixon, or the Miss Bonnie Pinckneys, um, but the black folks who really um, set the framework for what it looks like to build something, literally to build a building like the Urban League mm -hmm. and to fight for community and to wear a gun in a building because just the sheer audacity to want change was a threat to so many. But when I think about those leaders who got up and did it every single day for decades, I can't get tired after four or five years of doing this work. I can't get tired after two sessions under my belt. Mm -hmm. So I want the stamina and I want to be inspired by those leaders and I know that in Tacoma, I have so much support. I don't do anything by myself, even just to be um, a state senator and to know the women, the black women leaders who were in elected office far longer than I have been, the women who inspired me and taught me every step that it takes to be able to do something like this, to, to win a, a state race. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm grateful to have those women in my corner and I'm grateful for the men as well who were mentors to even to even those women. But Tacoma is rich in legacy and history and fighters and people who love and people who don't give up and people who have audacity. And that's what I want to carry forward, that type of legacy. Yeah, th there's that's a beautiful thing. And there's so much in terms of accountability, right, that comes with it because you're so right in terms of we, we really can't stop, right? It's, we're, we haven't seen it yet, you know, we're yeah. still pushing for equity, right? Uh, for so many of the same things that this legacy was pushing for. So it's a continuation of that. But it, I, I really appreciate how you frame it in audacity, because that's really what it is. So much of it is a challenge to whatever is considered the status quo or what folks maybe consider the norm. And that's what I, I get so inspired by. As we're here, you know, in the in this museum here, Washington History Museum, and we think about the Green Book, right, mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. This was such a, a, an amazing feat and showcased the resilience mm -hmm. of black community to come together to ensure that we were protecting each other, that we were looking at each other's safety when it came to us traveling this nation and this country. Um, tell us a bit about how that really, uh, you know, sits and lands with you in terms of, you know, this amazing Green Book exhibit here that really is, I think, it, talking a bit about what you were just sharing. Those were mm -hmm. folks that had that audacity. Tell us a bit about how that resonates with you. Absolutely. This entire exhibit is about folks who stuck with it. And with so much grace and so much pride and elegance um, and love for each other and love for community. I spoke here opening night of the exhibit and I talked about how extremely proud I was when I, as the Urban League um, CEO, launched our black business directory. I mean, I was just so proud of myself. <laughs> And when I started learning more about the Green Book and the original Black Business Directory <laughs> and the thousands of businesses that were listed, I was like, girl, if you don't sit down somewhere with these 63 <laughs> businesses in your directory, these folks worked hard and organized our people, right? For decades, worked hard to maintain a lovely business directory and to work together um, as community. Mm -hmm. And you know, with some allies as well, um, and I shared the, the story of the Green Book with my son and we purchased one and had it at home and we talked about it a little bit more and he was like, mom, can I take this to school? And I was like, yeah, you can. he's 11. And I was like, Love well, he it. was 10 then, but I said, yes, you can take it to school and share your friends. I just thought that was so cool um, that he wanted to. And, um, but it just, it, it definitely encouraged me. This exhibit encourages me. Um, and lets me know that if you don't know your history, you'll, some, you'll sometimes um, be too prideful. And you'll sometimes think that you created or invented something. And I think for me, it was really special to know that my ancestors, the people who came before me, from the swimming pools to the hotels um, to safe places to get gas, that my people organized before me, long before me. And I think it just, um, it makes me uh, happy to know just how brilliant and creative we've always been. It breaks my heart that that's the type of organizing that we had to do, that the racism that we continue to face has been going on for so long. Um, but we are a beautiful, creative, artistic people. And I just have so many shoulders to stand on. And when I'm oftentimes wondering what can I do, what should I do, and learning my history and what came before me, the answers are oftentimes there. Yeah. But I walked through this exhibit and I looked at these women, these moms, and again, just their beauty, their grace, their posture, their poise. We always show up and look bad, no matter where we go. Bad isn't good for people who don't know out there, but like we just, we show up and we are incredible people. We always have been. And I don't want any part of our experiences to diminish that. But I hope that we can feel empowered and encouraged and loved and can walk through an exhibit like this and know that this country is the only thing that should feel shame, mm -hmm. not us. Mm -hmm. We are a beautiful people, a beautiful community. And I stand here just in Tacoma feeling so grateful and proud that even Tacomans who were listed in that green book as well fought to make sure that we had safe places to go. And I think that's the importance today of continuing 
black business directories and recognizing our black owned businesses because we need to buy black, we need to encourage and support black, we need to make sure that we're doing our part. But these are principles that have long lived in our community. Yeah, it, it's a, oh, oh. It's a beautiful thing because um, even just this past uh, weekend, you know, what, what I'm what we're starting to see again is the events popping up, mm. right? And I appreciate these events because people will ask me all the time, man, where did you get that piece? Where did you? And I'm like, I'm shopping black. Yes. You know what I mean? Like there's so many amazing uh, business owners out there, vendors out there who have great, great works, great products, great services. And the idea that I think there's a real huge awakening for us internally as a black community to support black business is really thriving. It's uh, it's beyond a trend or some type of hashtag, right? This yeah. is really a way of life. And I think um, we're starting to see people get really intense about it. I've been seeing some really great movements online that, that represent that, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like everything I can, whether it's light bulbs, toilet paper, toothpaste, whatever, right? A detergent, I'm finding all the things that I'm going to need anyway. Yes. And I am being intentional to buy black. And so I, I love that, that message. And I think the Green Book definitely is that historical representation of what that looks like and what that means. I also think there's something to be said about the continuation of safety even today. We look at something that just happened in Buffalo and we, and we say to ourselves, this hatred for black Americans is still alive and well in this country. Yeah. And we can't really shut our eyes off to that. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate what you're saying. And uh, me too, this entire exhibit resonates with me because I'm one of those people. I have two sons, mm -hmm. 16 and eight. And I love hearing you talk about your son because that is so special that he wanted to take it yeah. to school. But so much of this is about how we model and exemplify what that means and what that looks like for our children, mm -hmm. right? Particularly as women with children mm -hmm. and families, we have to be thinking about that next that next leg up for them. What are some of the things that you uh, take in as you think about being that example? We're talking about you as a, as a senator, mm -hmm. as a CEO for Tacoma Urban League. Tell us a a little bit about that example piece because now yeah. you have you know younger black girls probably looking up to you and boys going man if, if she could do it I could too yeah. tell us a bit about what that means to you and how it sits with you yeah well and I know that I get to be an example and it starts at home with my own children and so I try to model black joy black excellence black rest my friends and family will tell you the rest of this black woman I ever know <laughs> Like, you get stuff done, but child, you get your rest. And I think, you know, in light of all of the um, things that happen in this country that continue to remind us that we are not safe, that just by waking up and being black and brown in our skin is not always safe in this country, we have so much to live for. We have so much that we have achieved as a community, as a people, and I want to continue to model those things. And, you know, earlier we were tossing around the word audacity. I want my children and other young people and adults in this community to wake up and say, absolutely, I have the audacity to still have hope, to still have yeah. love, to be able to extend love and grace to even those who hate me because I have more to give. I have the capacity to give. And on the days when we do not have the capacity to give, that we can rest that we can let others lead. But we are not to be defeated. We are not down and out. These things um, should not make us lack empathy, right? We should always take a moment, take a beat to say what happened in Buffalo, what happened in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. what happened in Tacoma, these things are horrible and there are actions that need to happen to ensure that these things never happen again. But that's the work that we need to do every single day. That's the stamina that we need to have to continue um, to fight every single day. Mm -hmm. But there is so much to be happy about, and I, I share those little things just with my kids, and whether it is just being able to come to a, a museum exhibit, being able to get outdoors, um, being able to go on family vacation, we built this country. Mm -hmm. uh, I was listening to a podcast this morning talking about stereotype, and for anyone to toss around a stereotype that um, as a people we're lazy, and it's like, oh, the same people that built this country for free. Okay, how yeah. lazy, right? Yeah. So we have to also dismiss and dispel those negative stereotypes that don't tell who we are as a people. But I wake up every day joyful to be who I am, to be a leader in this state, to be a leader in my household, to be a leader in my community, and I know that there is much work to get done and I will never give up. That is the example that I want to set. 
Yeah, I, I think it's so key. I mean, you're talking about this and I'm like, you know, tell us a bit about how community connects with this uh, message and this strategy, because it is an all-encompassing strategy. Mm -hmm. That means we need more people involved. When you think about some of the things that happen at the state level with you as a senator, but also locally with you as CEO of Tacoma yeah. Urban League, tell us a bit about how people can be engaged in the work. Well, the beautiful thing is people are absolutely engaged. I mean, we are not an event sponsorship organization, but the number of people who now that things are opening up are excited to throw Juneteenth events or conferences for black and brown youth or conversations around mental health and are engaging us and saying, can you partner, can you help us? The number of black owned businesses that are popping up um, or, or growing because they have found new ways to be innovative and the ways that we get to support or sponsor or participate, um, and I mean sponsor financially or be a partner in some other way, it's incredible. But the engagement is there, folks are active, they are tackling the topics, and I say to my team at the Urban League, you know, what I love is we don't have to do all of the things. The things are happening. We don't need to throw another Juneteenth event. Yeah. The events are happening. <laughs> but how can we promote them on our social media? How can we support them? How can we be a, a financial partner to make sure that these events happen? That needs to be our role. But folks are engaged. They're willing to partner. They contact, contact us all the time to see how they can volunteer or how they can support our work or how they can even, you know, make donations to support the work at Tacoma Urban League. And we just want to continue to see more of that. I mean, we are working with some small businesses. There is one that we are um, going to provide a, a business grant to um, that I, I mean, I guess I can say it here. and they might, they might know who I'm talking about, but they are launching a, a pizza food truck. There's another small business that we supported, $20,000, a $20,000 grant to the small business owner who needed a van. He's in entertainment. He's been doing the work for years, but needed that asset to help his business to grow. And so we made that investment. No barriers. We just want to help people who are, who are engaged in doing the work. And then for folks who are like, but how can I do more? How can I get engaged? They can reach out to us. And if we can connect them with our work, we're happy to do so. If we can connect them with a partner organization, we're happy happy to do that as well. And then I say the same thing on a state level for folks who want to see laws look different to one, make sure that they know who their state um, representatives are. Make sure you know who your state senator is and you can go to find my um, legislature, my legislator online. I forget what it's called, but it's like find my legislative representative or something like that. Type in your address, make sure you know who is your senator, who are your two representatives, um, who represents you on a school board. But if you want to engage civically, you got to first know who represents you and then be in communication. Tell them what you want. I always say respectful discourse, respectful dialogue. You can be clear and assertive, but you get things done when you also communicate you know, with respect. Um, so reach out to those folks who are making laws for you and make sure that they hear your voice as well. And I know for my constituents, I tell my team, every single constituent gets an email response. So whether we agree or disagree or can make happen what you want, if you reach out to us, we're going to connect with you because we want to let you know that we are trying to engage you in some way, shape, or form. But I love that the community in Tacoma is just working hard and finding ways to show black, black brilliance, to elevate black businesses, um, and to make sure that I, our joy is alive and kicking and we're providing different outlets, even late nights or family brunches, just all types of innovative ways to bring our community together and stay connected during a really difficult time. So I'm proud of Tacoma and proud of our neighboring cities here in Pierce County. Yeah, I mean, this is the, that's the beautiful stuff for me because I, I love to see that the COVID has brought out so many different innovative techniques mm -hmm. and strategies for us to be like, we got to still be connected. You know, when they were talking about social distancing uh, in community, it was like we were calling it something else because we didn't want to say we were distancing from each yeah. other, right? It was like, no, we're, you know, we're being safe. We would just do, use different terminology to never really push the message that we need to be totally distant from one another because connectivity, particularly in black communities, has been how historically our ancestors thrived, mm -hmm. right? It was these collective communities, the connection uh, uh, to the people, everybody kind of doing their part. And mm -hmm. so I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, when we think about 
the amazing spaces that Tacoma has to offer. Uh, you know, obviously Washington Hist History Museum, this is an amazing space to come yeah. and check out. Uh, tell us a bit about some of your maybe top five places in Tacoma that, that you think you gotta stop by these places if you're coming through Tacoma. Yeah. Well, definitely, I, I forget the last state. I, I think I was in Alabama, and someone who had visited here in Tacoma was like, well, the best Southern food restaurant is Southern Kitchen. I'm like, well, you got that right. So definitely Southern Kitchen makes it top of my list. I really appreciate them as a business um, and just their, their methods for how they produce their food, cook their food, their thoughtfulness around just healthy eating for the black community. I think years ago they even stopped serving pork, but they are really thinking about the health needs of the black community and what they can do to offer um, just the most delightful meal choices. Um, when I think about places to go and just have fun, honestly, oh my gosh, I'm like, what is isn't the Blue Note in Lakewood is a really great fun place to go and hang out. We go there. I mean, it's we, we've gone there less because of the pandemic, but that's a place too where friends and I um, go and hang out. I won't say any names. I almost <laughs> dropped some names like what friends, but if you see us there, you'll see us there. Um, I really appreciate that um, Nate Jackson also was featured because I do think that his establishment is just a wonderful place to go and have fun. And we've been out as judges for some of his comedy shows or competitions. Um, and I just think finding laughter and humor um, and just reminding ourselves to laugh and have a good time is so incredibly important. And then also we wanna get outdoors. I know that a lot of folks go down through the Point Ruston area, but there are lots of great parks too on the hilltop. People's Park is a great park. Wright Park is a great park. Owen Beach is gonna be opening back up soon. Um, and then my last favorite place to go, but not least, is the Tacoma Urban League. Our doors have been shut for a couple of years, and I just want to invite everyone to come on out, visit us at Tacoma Urban League. We're at 2550 South Yakima Avenue, still in the hilltop where we've been for decades. And so that's my favorite place to be because that's where I get to, to work and serve community each day. Well, uh, a beautiful, beautiful uh, job that you are doing. I, I'm hearing about you in my activist corners, right? Uh, we talk a lot about representation, but we also talk about people who are really standing in their values, which I think is um, sometimes there's this hard lane that, that you know we have to understand in terms of the history of us not really being welcome here and then having to pave a lane for ourselves and kind of push ourselves into it and so I want you to tell us a bit about what that means because as you're there as a as a state senator mm -hmm. you also are probably still dealing with people who are like man I don't trust you know politicians I can't you know what I mean I can't trust what they got going on how do you break that mode or break the monotony of thought for so many people and particularly in black community who have that huge yeah. distrust for what you know politics has meant for them um, in their lives yeah well, I definitely don't stand here as someone that's trying to defend government, not state government, not federal government, because I think those systems were not built for us. They don't serve as well, and it's going to con continue to take a lot of work for us to fully infiltrate and change those systems. So I don't defend them. They, you know, I think where folks are disappointed and mad and upset and distrusting, they have lots of great reasons to do so. What I get to show up and do is be a different model and example, um, and I mean that. I think the way that I want to carry myself in life, but also carry myself on social media and just not be another elected official that is here for sound bites or that's here for press or that's here for a show that's here to attack people. I'm happy to really attack issues and problems and, and pro you know, like problems we need to solve in our community, mm -hmm. but I don't need attention because I'm dragging someone on social media. I think that doesn't do good to anyone. That's not the type of, type of example I want to be even as a parent. So I think the best that I can do is try to be a positive example of how someone can show up as an elected official and how you can bring your full self and your story to the table and represent your community um, and even in the face of adversity because I talked about it's important to communicate respectfully but I get lots of emails that use you know lots of swearing which you know there's a time and place for everything but if you want me to help you that might not be the time or place um, lots of swearing or just you know negative things or just distracted messages and I think I want to be someone that even greets that type of communication with like, hey, happy to help you, but we have to be respectful. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to disrespect you because we don't agree. And I like to tell people thank you and show a lot of um, gratitude and, and graciousness. 
in the work that I do, but I don't blame people for not trusting government. I just try to show up as a different example that maybe will bring people in that will allow them to trust me. And I, and I have lots of colleagues who I think are doing the same thing, that we can deliver on what we said, that if I told you I'm going to do something, the least that I'm going to do is do that. And if I said I can't do it, then you know that that is truth and honesty. But I want to be someone that can be depended on. I want to be someone that is honest and that is real. Um, and I think there, you know, there seems to be a place for that type of leadership in our state government. We just need to see more of it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, more people need to understand that there are real people in these roles. I think um, mm -hmm. there's oftentimes this kind of veneer or facade that gets put up and it's unfortunate because it's, it's real people who get elected. And then for some odd reason, the system cranks that out of folks, wrings it out like a sponge, right? And dries out, you know, a lot of the things that you may have been passionate about when you started your campaign. Um, because there's certain things you have to do in order to make it work in politics. And we're seeing that kind of come through uh, with people who are like, you know, I, you know, I'm not gonna continue on in this, you know, like, I, you know, so you were just talking about, you know, that audacity and having really the tenacity to kind of push through some of those spaces to constantly be a represent a representative uh, you know of all the things that you bring to the table as I appreciate that um, you know while we're sitting here and we talked a bit about the green book uh, I, I just got to ask because there's so much rich history um, in Tacoma and I, I'm just looking at this this is uh, just a beautiful exhibit and when you were here on opening night you talked about speaking here what were some of the top things that really resonated with you in this entire exhibit yeah, well, I've come a couple of times, I think, since then. And I think the things that really, for whatever reason, a lot of the, um, like, glam and aesthetics really does resonate with me. And it's, it's because even during the worst of times, we still showed up as our very best as a community. And I think that just mesmerizes me every time when I think about people having to move and travel, when I think about people being denied what is rightfully theirs, and to still say, like, you can't take my dignity. You can't take that. You can't, you, you, you can't take the fact that I know I belong here, that these days are going to be short-lived, that good times are coming, that we shall overcome. And so I think it's just, it's the look of, like, I, I look and I'm like, it's, it's giving, we're coming. <laughs> It's giving, like, more is, you know, we're deserving of more. Like, it just, so I don't know. I hope that doesn't sound too shallow. But I just, when I, when I look at the beauty and just, like, the glam, and I'm like, we're unstoppable, beautiful people, no matter what. We're going to keep showing up. Um, looking how we're looking. You can't hold us down. <laughs> so, um, but also things like just like love and care. I stood in front of a lot of the images that were of moms and their kids and how it would break my heart if I took my kids to a pool. We have a, a newly opened pool where I live in the city of Fircrest. And um, you know, that city has had its own history and, and family legacies. But if I took my kids to that pool and someone threw bleach in that pool on my brown children, how it would break my heart. Or if we had to go to only, you know, designated places for family vacations. And I think it's good to have places that are based on um, just social or ethnic or um, racial groups, if that's what people, you know, want to do. Um, I think being able to have uh, places for camaraderie and support is, is really beneficial. But just the hate and vitriol that I think our um, ancestors and, and that... Are, community members today still face, you know, just to make the connection. But when I walk through here, there's some, there's some, there's lots of heartbreak. Um, but I look at us and I'm like, we just, we knew what we deserved. We knew we deserved better. And we showed up every day looking like we are better, we deserve better, and it's coming our way here soon. I really appreciate that. Cause you know, somebody who, uh, you know, I do lots of TV. I got to show up every day. And, and, and some days I say to myself, oh, you know, once again, I'm gonna pull some outfit together and it's gotta be right, it's gotta be on point. I gotta, you know what I mean? Like some days I get up and I'm like, oh yes, I'm about to like, do something dope today. Yeah. And some days I really gotta like, okay, 
you have you have no choice yeah. i really actually it's not shallow at all i think it resonates with me 100% uh, my grandmother would always say to me y'all y'all don't even dress now you know mm. now she changed her tune cuz i'm doing tv all the time okay. so she sees it and she's like oh my god you look amazing you look amazing but that idea of what we wear represents how we feel yes. um, is something that was so rich in our communities and throughout our culture, throughout the, the entire United States. I think there's something so special about uh, black culture that permeates other ethnic groups because they realize, man, all right, there's some sharp folks over there. You know what I mean? So you're absolutely yeah. right. You know, it's something that we carry forward to this day. And, you know, somebody just said to me the other day, you know, well, y'all don't really dress too much up here in Washington. And I, I looked and I said, well, you know, hey, even if I got Birkenstocks on, trust and believe it's right. going to be all, you know, unified. <laughs> so I, I just appreciate you saying that. And, and I, you know, like you, I encourage people to really come down here and check out this exhibit. It's an amazing part of our history, not just in Washington State, but for the entire nation. Mm -hmm. And um, they've done such a great job of curating this exhibit. Uh, before I let you go, you got to tell the folks how they can connect with you. If you have anything exciting coming up that you want to make sure that we're plugged into let us know how we can support you and how we can connect thank you i definitely invite you all to follow us at tacoma urban league we're at um, TAC Urban League on most social media platforms. You can also follow me in my state senate work as Senator Nobles on most social media or you can just search for Senator Tawana Nobles and if you want to follow me personally I'm Tawana Nobles on most social media platforms um, but hopefully you can find me out in community supporting community doing the work with um, just amazing Tacomas and folk Tacomans and folks here in Pierce County. So it's about to be summer. We're about to be out, and hopefully that's where you'll find me. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely about to be out here pounding these pavements and these streets. <laughs> Twana Nobles, thank you so much for spending some time with me out of your busy schedule. We thank appreciate you. you and your experience, and congratulations on all the things you're doing. Stay repping for us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Oh, you guys heard it right there from Tawana Nobles herself doing the work and having the audacity to stick it out. Thanks for watching. All right. That was Trey Holiday yesterday down in Tacoma at Washington State History Museum with State Senator Tawana Nobles. Dope interview there. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, the senator, man, a real pleasant down to earth person you know i i happen to have an opportunity to talk to her for a few minutes uh, you know it's a pleasure i actually look forward to speaking with her again soon we're gonna get out of here a little bit early today like i was telling you where uh, well we got a lot of stuff going on let's put this uh slide back up there someone and this is this is actually Triana's niece um, that we have this missing alert for up here on the screen. Nevea Hampton, age 12, last seen yesterday in Federal Way. And um, if you have any information, contact the Federal Way Police Department. Um, tomorrow, show, show tomorrow, we expect Trey back tomorrow at 11 a.m. We got a great show lined up for you guys. Don't forget, this weekend, man, it's the Folk Life Festival. We're going to be streaming one of the stages live here at Converge, so you can catch it online or, of course, down there at the Seattle Center. Folk Life Festival is going to be real dope. You know what I'm saying? I'll be there. So I'm going to be there. Vaughn, you coming? You going to hang out with us? Huh? Sure you want to hang with old Eddie Kane? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be at folk life so you know what i'm saying check us out um but on that note like i said we're gonna get out of here a little bit early today i want to remind you go forward in your purpose go forward in your humanity and until tomorrow at 11 a.m peace What do I see through a lens of fear? A thousand little steps to go. What do I fear after all these years? Lord knows I don't even know. I've been running on the edge of a sundial, sleeping in the shadow. I've been begging you to see me. 
than hiding beyond the unreachable. Looking now left on a right hand turn, just trying to make a deal. The lazy shoes and love is a love that churn. That's the kind of food that heals. I've been searching for the end of an era, waiting to be ready. The world is bigger than a moment. Be steady, that's how you can feel it's real. But I feel I got used to hiding the holes This whole world got no tricks And I'm in the thick of it This I swear I'm already sick